who is the, the bioarchive uh, on the net. And FIT stands for, uh, well, you know, it's French fries in, uh, in French, even though I'm not French, but it stands for Framework for Information Theory Analysis of Electrophysiological Data. And it's a work we've been uh, working on since a couple of years. And Etienne Combrisson is the main uh, postdoc working and developing this. So uh, the aim of FRIT is, uh, so the, actually when we started developing this, there was a, a little gap in the, in the software community in order to provide uh, a toolbox that included uh, tools based on information theory for the analysis of local brain activity and functional connectivity uh, between brain areas, and also with the group level statistics inference framework. Uh, basically, well, the idea is always the same. So trying to pick up some ideas about the dynamics of neural activity from functional connectivity analysis. And why information theory? Uh, information theory, because um, some basic uh, measures from information theory, such as mutual information and conditional mutual information, actually can be the very uh, practical and can be used for different types of statistical approaches. As you see in this table, for example, the mutual information between two univariate continuous variable is the equivalent of a Pearson correlation or a Sperman rank correlation. And a simply condition mutual information is also similar and equivalent to different measures such as partial correlation or Granger causality. Uh, in particular, we started off from uh, using, especially with the need to have some tools which are usable on very short time series, uh, such as in neurophysiology and single trend neurophysiology. We use a, a Gaussian copula version of mutual information and conditional mutual information, which allows to simply to reduce the problem of estimating mutual information values from uh, entropy measures. Um, by means of very simple estimates based on covariances between si within signals and between signals, such as the mutual information equation actually in the Gaussian in the in the Gaussian case boils down to a simple calculation of determinant of um, covariance matrices, and um, it's also very practical because you can analyze both, uh, both the relation between continuous signals, such as brain activity, and some discrete variables, such as, say, multiple conditions, or between continuous variables, such as brain activity, and, say, behavior variables, such as reaction times, or also in the conditional case where you have the possibility to analyze three variables, both condition, uh, continuous and discrete. And if you look at the code, basically the core functions is that there is a single core function, especially I point you to this GCMI, so Gaussian Copula Mission Information for ND, just a number of, so in N variables, N dimensions, sorry. And it's actually the core function that is behind all the calculations that performed in FRIT. Uh, for what concerns functional connectivity, we've implemented already some measures such as uh, standard static functional connectivity based on mutual information rather than uh, linear correlation. And also in the dynamical case, uh, so time resolved. And also we have implemented some simple measures of Granger causality, such as those based on covariance. That's why you have here covariance based Granger causality that can be used to calculate both a static representation. A static uh, functional connectivity, directed functional connectivity matrix, but also in a time resolved manner. Um, there is a directory, so the con directed contains different types of uh, connectivity measures. We are working on them and, uh, and you see how quickly we are updating them. So far here, DFC stands for dynamic functional connectivity. This is for Granger causality, and we are currently working on measures of single trial coherence. In addition to also fit allows, in addition to the Gaussian copula GCMI estim estimate, um, we can also use some more standard methods such as the binning methods, and is also compatible with more complex like kernel based methods. For what concerns the statistics, uh, so the idea was to provide some ways to perform both statistics at the single subject level 
uh, using like a fixed effect approach in which you just combine a different subjects, participants, for example, or also to do some random effect analysis in which you model the, the distribution of the effects in the populations. Mm -hmm. And this is combined with some non-parametric statistics based on permutation test and also multiple comparison corrections. Uh, basically, there are two main functions for this in the stats directory, um, which are combined in some kind of workflows, which are even higher order, uh, high level functions. Here I was going from the low level functions, so from um, the core functions to more high level workflows, depends on your needs and also on your level of knowledge of the software, which level you want to approach software. In the workflows, um, Etienne has developed some ways to, to combine different um, steps in uh, FRIT. For example, the, free, the, the, the neural data and, and task-related data, they are injected and they follow either, say, a fixed effect or a random effect analysis, in which you estimate both the true and the permuted values of mission information, for example. And then these are injected in a second part, second set of um, uh, tools in which you can do uh, statistical analysis, so inf inferences about the p-values, and also for correct for multiple comparisons using different criteria, such as a test-wise approach or a cluster-based approach that also for time series analysis is pretty uh, practical. Um, these workflows are uh, included in the workflow direct directory in uh, Tufrit. For example, you have a workflow for mission information here, which is the one that estimates the, for different subjects the mission information values with different parameters, and also for the statistics. So a standard and a typical pipeline is something that looks like this. So you prepare the data. It can be LFP, MEG, SCG data can be at a single subject or multiple subject or multiple session uh, analysis. You have the task variables such as experimental data. There's the first step in which you have to tell Frit how your data is uh, organized and create what it's called the data set, an extrophilosophical data set. This is like one line of code. Um, uh, in the second part, you may want to calculate the mutual information and calculate the effect size across subjects and across sessions and so on. And then a third step in which uh, you perform the statistical analysis. So that gives you the result, for example, the dynamic or per region effects and the p-values. Um, there is loads of um, um, documentation already. So there is a nice website that I suggest you to look at uh, with, nice, with lots of examples. And also there are some simulations with a tutorial and also there are some simulations on our autoregressive models for different types of example analysis. And basically, in summary, um, what it allows, so what we are doing now is, um, how much time do you have, please? One or two minutes? One plus minute. OK. Uh, so uh, basically, this software allows the analysis both at the ROI base, so which will be interesting and, and we are working on the integration with zebra uh, for error based and network based analysis in the same framework it allows the analysis both of, of single trial and time result functional connectivity using different measures such as from standard and undirected mutual information or range of causality um, again it allows atlas based or channel level analysis both for whole brain such as meg but also for sparse data I will show you a brief example for SCG data. And working both on a single participant and group level. It's now on feed. We are now actually, since we are pretty new into HBP, we are uh, finishing the integration process into eBrains. And we are testing now um, the tool on intracurrent EG data from the uh, Jean-Philippe Lachaud, which is on eBrains on a task related um, analysis. And here you have an example we are working on, the, we are developing the, the Python, sorry, the Jupyter notebook to do, to do this, to access directly the, the data on eBrains. So, and to do, uh, for example, like task related activity in which you have here an increase, say showing uh, brain regions in which you have an increase of high gamma activity, which is one of the newer correlates we look at, and also to plot the functional connectivity, which is task related. 
And I think I will stop here. And if you have some questions, please.